Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture. And I'm Andy Murray from What Culture. And don't forget, if you want to listen to the news as a podcast whilst you're out and about, you can do so by searching for What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. But coming up today, WWE have signed a hot new Japanese prospect. Johnny Gargano shoots some people calling NXT the minor leagues, sort of. And a WWE champion is injured. This is the news. But we are going to kick things off by talking about Raven. Yes. Which is exactly who you thought we'd be talking about on this Monday morning. But there's been a bit of an update on the situation regarding him, AEW and the Dark Order over the weekend, courtesy of the very good sources over at PW Insider, who are reporting, as a lot of people identified and as we spoke about on the news, the Raven's appearance on Dynamite this week was just a red herring. It was done to throw people off the scent. The identity of the Exalted One, the Dark Order's leader in AEW, is not going to be Raven. Uh, He was just positioned there. They showed him on TV. He was sitting there in the crowd watching the kind of beatdown go down. Later on, AEW actually tweeted about it and said, Hey, look who's here! Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Uh, Jimmy Havoc posted a picture with Raven to, to Twitter. And of course, this led to a lot of speculation that Raven would be the Exalted One. Of course, Raven being kind of this disaffected character himself. Uh, cult leader vibes from his days with the flock and ECW and WCW, all of that kind of played into it, but no, it's not going to be Raven, it's going to be someone else. It's going to be a Matt Hardy, a Brody Lee, Christopher Daniels, DDP, it's going to be someone else. Yeah, myself and the Daddy Boys did a whole podcast on this uh, last week, which is well worth checking out. Um, I, I get the table where we debated uh, the merits of having someone like Raven. I think everyone really thought... Yeah, that's kind of a bit obvious to just having yeah. me sat behind me. Yeah, like, we'll get our tickets together, group discount. Look at my shirt. Um, but yeah, like you said, there's so many names there Brody Lee, Matt Hardy, Christopher Daniels. My favourite one, unquestionably, uh, is a, a sort of really out there theory that it's Ted DiBiase Jr. But okay, okay, Ben Roy. I, I, I don't know why, <laughs> but I think, it's, I think it was on, someone made this up on Reddit Squared Circle. It's since got getting more and more traction. I mean, it's going to probably be Matt Hardy, but still, yeah, it could be anyone, considering the the, the fact that I like that AEW have thought about this and you know showcased other people rather than just being this name, this name, this name, and people always will work it out immediately. Yeah, yeah, no, it's been good. Like, it's they've kind of got me interested again in the Dark Order after that disastrous angle on the 18th of December and certain other things that have been Am I resonated. right in thinking with that, that the, one of the theories was that that was meant to be the, the reveal of Marty Skrull potentially as yeah. the Exalted One or at least as a member of the Dark Order. Obviously Marty has uh, signed a new contract with uh, ROH and which does kind of make sense because it felt like big beat down, right, yeah. what's this going to lead to? Oh, it was nothing. Oh yeah, it was just the evil Uno and Grayson. Yeah, that was a Dave Meltzer uh, theory, I believe, mm. that it was going to be Marty. We set up, that would have certainly resonated a lot stronger because everyone in that crowd would have known who Marty Skrull is. Um, yeah, let's let's see how it pans out, man. Like, Skrull would have been a really interesting choice. Obviously, that's well off the table. Mm. Hardy's WWE contract's up on the 1st of March, so he wouldn't be able to appear technically on this week's episode of Dynamite, but maybe next week? Who knows? Mm. Do you know my theory is, is it's not, I don't think it's Teddy B.S. Jr. Vince, AEW's will work. <laughs> uh, right, let's move on and talk about the uh, hot new uh, Japanese pro wrestling prospect who has signed with WWE, Sari. 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 I suppose you could say, Sari seems to be the hardest word. Nice. Good night, everyone. Uh, no, the 23-year-old confirmed the news on her Twitter account on Saturday. Thanks to Lords of Pain. They've subsequently obviously translated that tweet because I can't read Japanese. Uh, it says, I decided to think about doing professional wrestling abroad outside of Japan and, w- and joining WWE has been decided. I'm relieved to be able to properly report this to everyone, spreading Japanese women's professional wrestling, aiming for the top of WWE, aiming f- aim for the pinnacle of women's professional wrestling. I will fight for my life. Interesting signing this. I've seen a little bit of Suri on the indies in Japan for companies like Sendai Girls. Uh, she had a really strong year last year, led to a lot of people online, a lot of online hype, a lot of folks saying, hey, this is the Joshi wrestler now. This is the one to watch going forward. Um, but she's only 23. She hasn't been doing this. Yeah, I think she debuted in like 2011, but you know, at that young age, you kind of want to see people maybe stick around on the indies a little bit longer mm-hmm. and maybe develop their craft there before going to WWE. However, the rate of progression is very impressive. This is clearly a goal of hers. This is clearly something she's fired up and ready to do. Let's see what she can do. Uh, good for her signing for this major wrestling promotion at this young age, uh, just as her hype is starting to build. 
Let's see if she can do some good things, man. Yeah, I'm intrigued by this. Squared Circle Sirens, Casey Michaels report she's going to officially move to WWE and start there next month. Like, obviously, we've got a, 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 a list of some amazing Japanese uh, female wrestlers uh, currently with the company. You talk about Io Shirai and, of course, both the Kabuki Warriors. A mixed bag yeah. for them, I think it's fair to say. But like you say, intriguing when they get someone in so young, yeah. whether or not, rather than them being sort of tainted by... Well, these are Japanese wrestlers that have been, you know, learning this style. Yes. An incredibly talented Japanese wrestler, but who can really be taught the WWE style, and that'll be years before she hits her prime. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wouldn't expect her to see, see her on TV for a while, it, given how stacked that division is, despite how good Siri is. If you want to check her out, find some of her matches online. I'm sure there's maybe one or two on YouTube for free. Get ahead of the curve, see what the future looks like. Anyway. I, I, I'm just double checking, I've got her name right. I didn't change the way I do it. Is it too late now to say Sari? Sari. They are. Oh, just see what you did there. Good. Anyway, <laughs> that's us off the internet. The next one here is uh, the next one. Totally off my game because your song punch from <laughs> Mother Hubbard. <laughs> Johnny Gargano shooting. That's right. what you need to know. Shoot season is still low, still open. Johnny Gargano. NXT is ten <laughs> years old. Uh, Johnny Gargano was interviewed by TMZ, uh, in which he had some very strong words. For people who say that NXT is a developmental brand, for people who say terms like main roster when referring to Raw or SmackDown, I'll just... You can do it in the accent. Um, shall I do it in his voice? Do it in his voice. Let's do it in his voice. <laughs> so, on the subject of people referring to NXT as a developmental brand, that's... <laughs> that's how he speaks. That's BS. That's complete garbage. It's something that me and a lot of guys work like. I can't do that. It's completely uh, it's like illegible. Daffy Duck a bit as well. <laughs> I like the Dark Alistair. Such a dark uh, Johnny Gargano. You don't like him, do you? I like him. I, I think he's rubbish. Uh, that's BS. <laughs> that's complete garbage and is something that me and a lot of guys have worked to dispel for a very long time. Anybody out there who uses the words main roster when talking about Raw or SmackDown, how about you watch the show on Wednesday night? You'll see the real main roster. You'll see the best wrestling show on the planet. You'll see the best locker room on the planet led by me. So it's an in-character interview. Yes. So you know, pinch of pinch of Gargano uh, with this one, but you know. He's a fired up cheerleader guy. That's his character. That's what he was in the Finn Balor feud. Um, he's not necessarily going to drop that now that he's playing heel against mm. Champa and stuff. Uh, it's nice to see, man. Stuff like this gets people talking. Yeah, whilst he is a bit of an arsehole in this, <laughs> yeah. as you say, in character, uh, he also has a very valid point. I think a lot of us still <laughs> accidentally say main roster when you're talking about Raw and sure. SmackDown from, from NXT. But I think generally, certainly amongst more dedicated wrestling fans, I'm not going to say the word that we don't like, um, it's not considered to be the, the sort of feeder leagues anymore. Yes, yeah. yes, again, we'll stumble and no doubt in another video we'll say called up to Raw or SmackDown, but I think now it's, it's akin to, well, not akin to when they had ECW, that's a really bad comparison, but there's three di distinct sure. brands there that are all standalone brands. They don't need the help of anyone else. And I think by doing things like having the Royal Rumble winner, Charlotte Flair, challenge uh, the NXT champion, it kind of puts that point across to casual fans. The casual fans that I've spoken to when I explained that you know, Charlotte won the Royal Rumble and is subsequently challenging Rhea Ripley for NXT Women's Championship, that kind of makes the thing of them of oh, like, well, Charlotte Flair wouldn't be going down to yeah, the feeder leagues. A... It establishes it as a, a major brand. And I hope that this also means that we'll get a, maybe an NXT match or two at WrestleMania. Obviously we have uh, the, the takeover show the night or two before and it's, it should be considered on par with Raw and SmackDown because the, the quality of the product is certainly right up there. Yeah, the, the, like creatively and so forth, I think it's kind of tough to make an argument that this is some kind of B-tier brand. I think the only way you could possibly argue that it's a feeder league or whatever is if viewership numbers, right? Like, yes. But that's a boring way to kind of analyze the quality of a show, I think, sometimes. so. Um, and you wouldn't call AEW a feeder league to other wrestling Right, he's a feeder league to TNT broadcasting <laughs> or something. And um, I think, especially in this day and age as well, developmental league's an interesting concept because it's not that. Like, I mean, it's obviously got people who are training at the Performance Center and stuff. But it's not like they're bringing out raw people who've worked two matches in their life and having them wrestle on TV. Increasingly, it looks almost like their developmental territory is Evolve. Where yes. guys like Rick Bugues are going and working matches and doing the air guitar and stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah. Um, but NXT, yeah, it's it's evolved. It's a different product to what it was. The build of that Survivor Series pay-per-view was clearly, hey, look at these people. They're on the same level. And they won that pay-per-view, remember, as yeah. well. So in kayfabe, it's not a feeder league. 
uh, creatively, it's certainly not a feed league. And if you've never watched NXT because you thought it was a feed league until you heard something like this, well worth checking out. Watch this week, it's going to be great. Chamasso Champa versus Austin Theory, loads of good stuff. Oh, Charlotte's on there. Charlotte and Bianca yeah. Belli, yeah. So there you go, well worth, oh, there's another reason to go and check it out. Uh, some bad news though coming out of WWE. Jordan Devlin, the latest WWE wrestler, and of course the NXT Cruiserweight Champion at the moment to uh, succumb to the injury bug. The NXT Cruiserweight Champion uh, posted a tweet on Twitter after missing the uh, Progress Chapter 103 booking due to an elbow issue. He said, sorry to the This Is Progress fans uh, and management for miss, I've back, almost said MGMT. Love them, <laughs> not listening to their music for ages. Uh, for missing Chapter 103 today. Uh, very strenuous schedule lately and picked up a bit of elbow bursitis. It'll be fine in a week or so. I just don't want to risk uh, infection or aggravating it and prolonging my time out. See you guys soon. He has been doing, I saw his travel schedule that he tweeted the other day. It's been uh, insane for him. Yeah, it's mental. He's all over the place as a traveling cruiserweight champion. He can do NXT UK, he can do the Indies, he's got OTT, he's got NXT itself, he's 205 Live. Busy man. Um, yeah, I really hope he just takes a couple of weeks off to just heal and get back to it because he's a guy who's really on the rise in WWE at the moment. Good defense against Leo Rush yeah. uh, this past week and stuff. I would hate to see that kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking, derailed by some kind of injury. So here's hoping. JD. Yes, get well soon. Get well soon. Right, let's move on to your Twitter questions. At what culture WWE, of course, if you want to get in touch with us. Uh, Bman32x starts us off today uh, saying, if you could revive one stable with new members, who would you make? I like this. Saying, oh. I would have three man band with Heath Slayer, of course, John Morrison, and Eric Bugenhog. Oh, and Rick that's, Bugs. That's quality, isn't it? Being at three MV with us. Um, Oh man, I don't even really know where to begin with this. I will always say this, myself and Bill Chambers have an affinity uh, with this tag team. I don't, it's a stable, but you, you know, however you want to do it. Too cool. I always want to see Too Cool <laughs> yeah. back. Scotty Too Hotty is obviously still working, I think, in the performance center. Rikishi may or may not want to get involved. Uh, obviously, the, the other men we can't unfortunately include. So, take your pick for someone like that. Anyone who wants to have a bit of a dance, I'm up for it. I, I love Too Cool. They're my favorite I'm tag team ever. I'm going for the new brood. It's Gangrel, obviously. It's Shayna Baszler, because she's a vampire yes. now. And it's Bray Wyatt, because he's a bit spooky. Ooh. There we go. Gangrel can still go, by the way, as well. He's a legend. Welcome. Yes, exactly. Uh, let us know your new stables with their new members in the comments. Who should I have as the third member? Scotty Too Hot, Rikishi. No way, Jose. Uh, Second question today comes from Matt McDonald, and another stable you should bring back, of course. Tights worldwide. Uh, Matt McDonald says, "I didn't do. It. I didn't want to shout. It's Monday. <laughs> it's it's early for that." Matt says, "Hey guys, with the announcement of Charlotte versus Bel Air on NXT this week, do you think NXT will close the gap in the ratings battle with Dynamite or even beat AEW? I personally say no, uh, since how great Dynamite was last week. But I would love your opinions. I don't think so. I think that the previous Charlotte appearances didn't really result in that much of a ratings bump either." Um, so there's not really a lot of evidence to point there and go, hey, yeah, this is definitely going to beat it, particularly as NXT show this week was, by all accounts, not the best effort from that brand, while AEW show was, like, critically acclaimed One of the best ones everywhere. I've ever done, yeah. Um, so, like, I don't think we'll see a big swing this week, but you never know with ratings. They're all over the place. Generally, we go with Tony Maglio of the Raps format here. Momentum plus marketing equals ratings. Let's see how these shows are pushed over the next couple of days. But at the moment, I'd be pretty confident in saying that I think Dynamite will win. I think that'd be the ninth week in a row, something like that. Revolution Go Home as well, isn't it? It is, so yeah. So you'd sense that they probably will definitely edge it, despite the fact, obviously, you've got a main roster star transferring over to NXT. Sorry, Johnny. Indeed. Um, but they are going to beat AEW in the build to WrestleMania. It's just going to happen because the, the momentum will be on NXT side. But Mania. Dynamite Mania. this week will probably uh, defeat NXT and with good reason considering last week's show. Yeah. Uh, Simon Horton gives us our final question today. Uh, more of a statement really saying, I've worked it all out. Fury beat Wilder, getting Tyson. Uh, Goldberg beats Wyatt. Fury versus Goldberg at WrestleMania. Fury becomes a two-sport world champion. You're welcome. I can totally see them doing that, you know. Like, it, it sounds mental, but like Tyson Fury is obviously a huge mainstream name. Uh, I think he earned something like 25 million off that fight the other oh. night. Um, Goldberg is like a big name star from the past. Guys like that are features on WrestleMania. I can absolutely see that, and I think it would go down. Goldberg goes for a spear straight away. I, oh, why did I say that? That's so weird. He goes for a spear straight away. Tyson Fury just punches him in the head while he's coming in. 
it'll be crap, but you know, they can do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's never stopped WWE in the past. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first of all, Goldberg, you're a big dosser, <laughs> uh, as Tyson Fury would say. I would be weirdly intrigued into watching that. It'd be so weird. Fascinating. It'd be see so what, odd. See how they would do it. Imagine Tyson Fury versus The Fiend as well. Oh my God. <laughs> What the hell? Imagine the fiend no selling his knockout punch. It's I harder. love that as well. I love the fact that people afterwards, I tweeted about this, people were saying like, wow, well, who knew Fury had such <laughs> knockout power? Every WWE fan. <laughs> yeah. He knocked Braun Strowman out cold. What, do you research boxing fans? Come on. Uh, Chico Stick gives us our today's and finally as we move on to that. It's been a while since we've had some uh, action figure action here. Yes, it is. Here. Uh, sharing this figure of Alistair Black. Looks familiar. Looks, <laughs> I can't put my finger on whether or not... I mean, it must be Alistair Black. Look at the tattoos. Indeed. <laughs> love to see it, don't you? You love to... We should point out, because loads of people tell us this every time we post a crappy action figure that's clearly the wrong person. Yes. We know the score. People return it with different figures in the box and stuff, but still. 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 <laughs> Chick magnet Phil. <laughs> Oh, great. Chick Magnet Alistair. I want to see one of these ones where it's like, Dusty Rhodes, but <laughs> actually it's Sonia Deville. I want to see the weirdest well, look, one. I want some more for our collection. We yeah, we've not had any in a while, have we? We've, we've got... just got the Thumbing and Bumming collection. Yeah, Thumbing and Bumming. I like the old ones that we got sent there. The great. classics. The classics. Let us know any more uh, action figures that you spot out and about, then we'll share them, of course. And let us know your thoughts on that and all today's news stories in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast from. As I mentioned earlier, that debate as to who the exalted one uh, for the Dark Order is. And and later on today, myself and the Daddy Boys will be sitting down to preview tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw. Uh, plus, let us know your thoughts and Twitter questions on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. And watch there. Follow both of us. You can follow him at... You can follow me at Andy H. Murray. The H stands for hey, man. I slept through my alarm this morning, oh. so I'm really sorry about yawning on camera. Bad start to the week, innit? Terrible. Oh. I'm gonna go. Should we go for a nap? Let's do it. Yeah, okay. You can follow me at Anna Wilborn. Follow us all at WhatCultureWWE. As I said, my thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for watching. And we will see you soon. To the beanbag.